In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create these nice percentages and recalculate them, as you can see, the moment we remove certain values here until we have only one value which should show 100%. And of course, if we start selecting again, we will be adding more and more values and the percentages recalculate back into its original state. So let's start to explore how we can do this with Chart.js. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewer's question, which is how to recalculate percentages if a slice is hidden in the pie chart in Chart.js. We're going to use here the Chart.js plugin labels for that. So this question came from one of my other videos about how to add percentages and values in the data labels in pie chart. And if we scroll down here, you can see here the question came from Mohammed. Kavari. So a special thank you to Mohammed for asking the question. And this is what Mohammed asked. Thanks for the, for your video. I got a question about adding percentages after hiding one slice. I mean, if I click on a legend, it hides the slice from the pie chart, but it doesn't or does not add its percentages to the other slices on the pie chart. And I wonder if this is possible. All right. So let's start to explore how we can do this. So the first thing what we're going to do here is going to get our default code. To get our default code, make sure you go to chartjs3.com getting started. We have the default code. You might notice this here. For some reason, my Google Chrome gives this error. But anyway, we're going to copy this chunk of code here. And once we copy that, we're going to paste that in here. And once I did that, what I will do is I'll just cut out this section of the title and put it in there. All right. So then save that, refresh. There we are. So now we have our nice bar chart here. Of course, we want a pie chart. So let's convert this immediately into a pie chart. So I save this and of course remove the scales because the pie chart doesn't have any scales. Save that, refresh. There we are. All right. So a pie chart is slightly too big. So let's reduce the size to 500 pixels here. Save that, refresh. There you are. That is a bit better. So now let's start to use the specific plugin or the specific labels plugin to put in the percentages in here. And the reason I use this plugin because this plugin is quite easy for adding percentages and it's quite powerful, but we will do a lot of customization on it. So it doesn't matter really. However, I do recommend you to check out this plugin because this plugin is extremely powerful for a pie chart. Anyway, we're going to go to this specific link here, GitHub, and you see here, David, David or David Violante has created this plugin or specifically, let me explain a bit more. He forked it from a other developer here and forking means getting the code from that and then continue on with the development. And the reason why is this one here is the old version only supports until Chart.js 2. And then David eventually created a upgraded version supporting Chart.js 3. So that's why I'm going to grab this here. So to get the link here, just go here. You will see this and you will see here is initials DV. And that's very important because that means that's the latest version that you have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy that, put it in here, and I'm going to copy the script tag here. I just cut out this and put it in here. Make sure the plugin should be loaded after the charge as library. This is very important. So we're going to save this now. Once we save that, refresh, it takes some time to load, and then you can see already instantly it shows percentages. So in our case, we don't need these percentages because look what happened if I do this. It doesn't recalculate accordingly because if we would remove everything except one, it should be basically 100%, which is not the case. So let's start and work on that. So what we're going to do here is first of all, we go in the options, we're going to grab the plugin functionality. So we're going to say your plugins, and in the plugins, I'm going to say here labels. And labels is a object or namespace object that is created because of the specific plugin that we have loaded now. So this is available here now. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to say here render, and with render, we can basically put in percentages, values, and uh, functions. In our case, we will be needing functions because we will have to do uh, a few items in here. So let me first work on that and we're going to say here, context. If we do context and we do this, 
So we have here a callback, and if I would say you just return, here we could return anything we want. In this case, we could say percentages. But uh, what I will do with here for now, I'll just say here only the context, console.log context. If I save this and I refresh over on developer tab, you will see we get a lot of objects here. It's being loaded. Why? Because of all the animation and all the differences here it loads. But also, once you hover over it, it will trigger something. So if you hover on this specific blue one, you should grab here the values. Am I correct? Oh, well, it loops through in all of them. So then in this case, it doesn't matter. But you can see here, let's say Tuesday would be probably the blue one. It has a value of 12. You can see here the percentage is already pre-calculated. So that's very nice. However, the percentage is calculated based on every item here. And we don't want this because we have an issue here. So what I want to do now first is how can we grab all these values, get the sum of it, but also make sure that if we have an item hidden, how do we calculate that? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make very simple a function trigger. So this is necessary because we cannot get out of this specific area or here. We cannot get out of that. And what I mean by that is I need to get the data here and I need to find a way to check if something is being visible, yes or no. And for that, I cannot be within this specific uh, functionality here or in this objects here because they don't give me the access to that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a function. Or basically, I would just say here, this will be a new function. Let's say here. This function will be uh, show uh, show data, something like that. That's all right. And then what I want to do here is, before we even do something, we just say here, show data functionality. And this show data functionality for now basically does nothing yet. But eventually, we will be grabbing that. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to say here in the show data, all right, and I guess here the show data uh, we have to use here this, that will be probably the best, and then do console.log. So I'm going to show you now, it should be triggered here. So if I say here, that return, what I'm going to return is now, I will just say yes. Save that. Put your semicolon, semicolon, just to be neat. Refresh. We can see here, if I hover over it, it says yes, and it shows yes. So this means, if I remove this here, we have communication from a function outside with the labels object inside. All right, so this is very, very important. Once we have this connection here or communication, we can now start to do here something. Because as I indicated, I need to grab these data here, which you can do in here, but what I also need to do is to check if they're visible, yes or no. For that, I need to be outside, and this is the reason why. So what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to say here, my chart dot and what i'm going to do is basically i want to go my chart and then here well in this case i can just get immediately items so i say get data visibility and here what i want to do is here because this will say check if a data is visible yes or no and then we're going to say here let's say zero zero would indicate here this item remember this is not related to data sets because all of these are data sets here and with a pie chart, they have a different structure. So if you're very familiar with data structures, I have another video about that explains that data structures. Data structures for pie chart and donut chart works different compared to the others because they have no access. So what we're going to do now here is basically grab then the specific item here. Let's say this one, and if I save this now, refresh. Oh, I need to, of course, do a console log, but I'm going to do here is I will just say return this or do a console log for now here just to make sure that we have any kind of visual what's going on there. Save that. We maintain this here still because it should still trigger the function because if I hide this, this function here below is not being triggered anywhere. So we need to have edit this function active with or without console log, doesn't matter. So you can see here it says true, all right? So what I'm going to do here, uh, the return, maybe if I just grab this, it will eventually just show the yeah, item. Well, not maybe, I'm 100% certain of that. This should show that. Yeah, you are. So this is number, if I'm not mistaken, number zero. So that would mean if I say the red one, yeah, you are. 
it converts to false. True, false, true, false. But here, this stays all the same because we didn't adjust any of these. So now we have basically the, what I would say, the way to check if something is active or not. And because of that, we can now recalculate this. We just grab these data here with an if statement. We loop it through and then we say if data index zero is active or not, or true or false, depending on this. So what I'm gonna do here is the following. I'm gonna say here a uh, for loop first. And what I want to do here, before I even do the for loop, I'm going to say here let, and this I will call here the total sum. And the total sum would be basically the total amount. By default, this here should be 69. That's the default value of them all together. So what I want to do here is the following. We say here four, and then we say the following. We say here, let i equals zero, or what we could do, this is apparently more better, because it will avoid excess code in the loop. We just say here, we already put that in here, or we define the i already. Here we just say i semicolon. The reason why we're doing this is more better because then you don't have to loop it seven times this entire multiple characters. We just only have to loop a single character. All right. So what we're going to do now is we say here i, and then we want to keep on looping this as long as what we want to check here is this is our indicator here. So what I'm going to say here is as long as my chart dot config dot data if you're wondering how i'm getting there we have here my chart config data and from data we go here to data sets and this data set is data set zero so index zero then here data so we have here the data already dot data sets zero and then we have here dot data and then what I want to grab here is the dot length. So we loop it through as long as the length is this and this length here is 7. So we keep on looping through it until it is equal to 7. Or if if it's larger, if at least, or if the i would be smaller than this. So that's very important. All right. So now what we're going to do here is, of course, semicolon i++. Plus plus, and then we're done here. So what I want to do now here is this visibility will be added with a total sum. So what I'm going to say here, an if statement, and this if statement will say this, if, here we say i, because we want to loop through all these values, if i would be equal to, uh, oh, oh, hold on, what am I doing here? This is the if statement. So if i is equal strict to true, in that case, I want to say total sum, and this will be then, a plus equal to whatever the value would be in our data. So I'm going to copy this, dot this, and then we say here i. Once we have this, and then we're done here with the if statement, and there we are. All right, so once we have this here, what I want to do here for now is just to say your console log and say total sum. So or I can even do a return here as well. You can just save that, refresh. All right, uh, let's just remove this one then. We have the return already, that's correct. You can see here we get this, all right. So if I then click on this, there was Thursday, and Thursday was number nine, if I'm not mistaken, see, as you can see. You can see here, the numbers is, are changing. So from there on, or from that point on, we can start to calculate the percentages. So we have this here, and we have now this communication intact. Put here semicolon, and then here just semicolon. I'm doing this, it's not necessary in JavaScript, although I do like to use this because I noticed that in PHP you need to do this. If not, you get a breaking, uh, or the code gives an error. And I noticed that if I stop doing it in JavaScript, I will, I'm applying that habit also on PHP. So I, I just do it everywhere, just to make sure that I'm consistent with my coding. So, what I want to do here is the following. I need to return here. What do I need to return? Well, basically, first of all, we have the show data this. This is basically the total sum value. So that's the communication that we have. So if I show this now here, semicolon, save that, refresh. All right, you can see it takes some time. And the reason why it's taking some time here, and you might notice it as well, because we use here the unpackage or unpack uh, JavaScript file. So what happened, it will 
it needs to unpack it first. It becomes basically zip filed or something like that, or gzip, and then it just takes more time. Anyway, doesn't matter so much. You can see here we get this value, but if I remove this, as you can see, all the values are now starting to match nicely. Beautiful. So now we have this 30 and here as well 30. All right, that's fine. That's not incorrect because this is the total sum right now. So we grab the total sum, or at least we have the total sum. If I have now the context here, let's go back here to the context. I'm going to remove this, save that, refresh. We can see here we get the numbers. And what we want to get is here, not the percentage, but we want the absolute value, which is number 12. So number 12 divided by the item here will give us a percentage value. So what I'm going to do here is basically, let's say your constant percentage and this percentage will be basically context dot value here dot value and then we say here divide by this beautiful functionality here and then we can say here probably if we get percentage we need to do probably multiply by 100 and if we do this we're going to grab this here if i save this later on we need to maybe uh fix the amount of decimals and there you are but we get these numbers now if i'm going to remove this you can see here it starts to look better we're going to move more move more you can see it gradually it increases until we should have 100 percent on the single item there you are so now this works beautiful so all what i want to do here is the following thing here dot and then we say here to fix one and i will just say here for concatenation plus concatenate a string uh, a string value with the percentage symbol if i save this now refresh we can see here now there we are so now we grab all these percentages we grab everything here there it shows nicely all right and that's basically if we go back here how to do it so if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to learn even more about this specific plugin, I highly recommend you to check out the Charges Labels plugin. I have an entire series here covering a lot of functionalities because it's a quite powerful one, especially if you're planning to use Pi and Donut charts. So I highly recommend it for that one as well to watch.